It's been now 11 years uh, since we started work um, on the topic of galvanic vestibular stimulation. And it's been quite a journey, I must say. And that hails back to an opportunity and a discussion that I had with a biomedical engineer who approached me with the idea of using galvanic vestibular stimulation, so very small stimulations to the inner ear, as a way to try to help with problems that are encountered in flight simulation. I got a phone call from Dr. Stepanek, aerospace medicine physician here at the clinic, and he had a really interesting question for me. He wondered whether you could provide a sense of rotation for somebody when in fact they were sitting still. Then we did that by putting an electrode behind each ear and putting a small electrical stimulation from one ear to the other and that would provide a rotation in one direction and if we reverse that stimulation it would provide a rotation in the other direction. Our goal was to put somebody into a full 360 degree spin with just using the stimulation while they were sitting still in the dark. And we ran that experiment and we were successful. The broader application of GVS in domains beyond flight simulation became apparent rather quickly. We looked at all the different combinations of electrodes in which we use four now, creating perceptions in all of the different directions. So we think of it this way. If we're going to create a rotation right to left, it's kind of like being in a merry-go-round. If we create a what we call a pitch response, it's kind of like doing a somersault. And if we do a roll response, it's kind of like doing a cartwheel. So those are all the different perceptions that we can create when the person's sitting still in the chair. We thought one day, if we can do that with a visual field and reduce the simulator sickness, why can't we actually do that with a movie? Based on our computational model, we have created an algorithm that produces the GVS to match the motion in the movie scene in real time. And as a result, the viewer gets a real motion experience while watching what's happening in the movie scene. When you apply the GVS at the right time, at the right amount, at the right place, now that becomes a magical motion experience. When I was first introduced to the team here at the aerospace lab, Dr. Jan Stepanek and Dr. Mike Sabet, I, I was really impressed uh, to hear what they had discovered. The most compelling part to me was that if, if I was feeling this experience and you were to take it away from me, I would want it back. We walked in here and within moments, literally, I'd say within five minutes of them telling us what GVS was, we got it. I mean, we got it big. And then we started seeing the applications for the world that we're involved in, in terms of entertainment and media. But there hasn't been another development since sound and vision were put together in the movies as significant as this GVS in all entertainment media. So there's this, this presence, this real presence, and that, that makes GVS the new VR. It doesn't make GVS an adjunct to make the old VR better. It makes GVS combined with sight, with vision, and combined with sound, the new virtual reality. So we are redefining virtual reality. We've just begun to scratch the surface and there's a lot of work to be done before we can say this is how much of what in order to treat XYZ disease. There is a completely new arena that is opening up and more importantly the things that we all thought we knew for sure turn out to frequently not to be the way that the books tell the story.